Steeler Nation, we are back with yet another great episode on the one and only The Sick Podcast, Steeler Crazy. I'm repping my Deuce Staley jersey, taking it way back. I'm Jay York Football. Next to me is Mike Up Sports One. I know you just got back from a wedding and probably really eager to talk some Steeler football with a very special guest that we have today. Oh, of course. Always eager to talk Steelers football. You got your Deuce Staley. I got my Sick podcast shirt on over here fashionable today good wardrobe selections so i guess we're off to a really good start at least yeah i think we should get to our guests because that's what the people come for who cares about jordan and mike we have a great show lined up and we cannot wait to bring it to you juliana run it turn up your volume your volume because you're about to listen to the sick podcast Steelers crazy. Harris Smith shields. Blacko Polamalu takes it home. Super Bowl 43. Pittsburgh might be bound for that thanks to number 43. The sickest Pittsburgh Steelers podcast. Sports entertainment like no other. It's going to be sick. All right. This gentleman is certainly a jack of all trades. Chief analytics officer at FTN. Fantasy is a creator of DVOA and often use metric in the NFL today. You can find him on Twitter at A Shots NFL. It is none other than Aaron Shots. Aaron, how are you? Hey, I'm good, guys. Enjoying my offseason, working hard on our preseason book. So I'm into it, man. So tell us about Love that. What is this preseason book you're working on? Yeah, preseason book called the FTN Football Almanac 2024. It'll be out in mid-July. People know we do this book every year, uh, chapters on every team, all kinds of advanced stats, charting stats from the uh, FTN data charting, um, fantasy projections for all the players, write-ups on all the skill players, all of our team projections, You know, the most accurate team projections out there. So uh, I don't have a URL to send people to now because we haven't designed the cover yet, but the book is out in mid-July, and you can follow me or FTN Fantasy for lots of information about it when the time comes. Yeah, we're excited to to hear that and check it out, absolutely, when that drops. Very, very good stuff. Uh, and I'm sure, obviously, DVOA will be talked about at length in that as well. Let's chat a little bit about this often-used metric uh, in today's NFL world. Uh, you're the creator of this, correct? You're yes. the uh, facilitator here. Give us, if anybody doesn't know what it is, the background of this, uh, give us the, the cliff notes. Short version is it measures success on every play based on the down and distance, then compares that to a league average baseline based on situation and opponent to tell you whether the team is more or less efficient than average with zero being average. And we have play-by-play -play breakdowns now going all the way back to 1979. Oh, <laughs> so wow. we now have 45 years, 45 years of DVOA. Can you speak to the Steelers uh, in the past couple of years, maybe last year specifically, um, in regard to kind of where they ranked defensively? Yeah, we, we had the Steelers higher than I think people think that they are. Ah. Um, we had them something like 11th or 12th. Their offense – um, came out as a little bit more efficient than you would expect mm -hmm. because Pickett faced a very difficult schedule. And the schedule got easier when Rudolph took over a quarterback. But I think part of the reason why the offense was so bad, I mean, I realize we can complain about Canada's play calling and we can complain about Pickett's deficiencies and all that, but part of it was the schedule during that first half of the season was pretty darn tough. Um, so we think that the Steelers' offense was better than people thought it was last year. That being said, it doesn't that doesn't have much um, doesn't have many ramifications for this year because this year they're going to run out there with a new quarterback and a new receiver of some sort and two new offensive linemen. And so, who cares that we thought that Pickett was a little bit better than his reputation? It doesn't really matter. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. That that is fair, and obviously a tough schedule looming this and year. The defense well, is we'll good. Like that. I'm sorry, I just yeah. talked all about the offense. What does DVOA say about the defense? The defense is good. Sure. But you knew that. Already. Yeah, absolutely. Highest paid in the league, so they better be good. Better um, be. Let's talk about some of those new faces on offense. Russell Wilson, uh, of course, the big story in the Steel City. 
his stats last year, I mean, people see the 26 touchdowns, the eight interceptions, you know, the the completion percentage obviously was was better. What are, what are the behind-the-scenes stats kind of tell us? Where are you at on yeah, Russell? DVOA, I think, had him a little bit below average, which I think is pretty commensurate with what the conventional wisdom is about him. I think the quarterback where I'm going to say things that you're not going to like is, is Fields. Mm-hmm. I think we all know what Wilson is at this point. I, he's probably going to be the thing we all think he is, so that's not a big deal. It is almost impossible in the last 40 years to find a quarterback who was as bad as Justin Fields for three years and turned it around. Well, wow. it's just, it's just near impossible. Like Jeff George kind of, which I guess, you know, we keep, I keep talking about Jeff George maybe makes sense as a comparable comparable to like, what if Jeff George was not a jerk, like, and could run, <laughs> then you'd have Justin Fields. <laughs> but, um, as much as I like the guy, you know, I said last year, I like the guy. I want the Bears. I would want the Bears to succeed. It's good. The Bears succeeding would be good for the league. It's very unlikely. Now we have another year of history of this guy not being good. And I'm in the same, you know, I, I, he seems like a nice guy. It would be fun if the Steelers had a good offense. I don't think he can be the guy. So I think Wilson is the quarterback and he's going to be what people think he is. And they're going to need the defense to carry him again. That's really the the example that sticks out the most, Jeff George. It's that that because difficult. that's the only one where a guy wow. turned it around yeah. after I guess Alex Smith, Alex Smith a yeah. little bit, but Alex but Alex Smith hadn't played anywhere near as much as Fields played. Yeah, he just a much takes more conservative so player. So many sacks, so many sacks, just takes so many sacks, and so much of that is on the quarterback, and it's on him, and it's just a real problem. Yeah, well, that is, uh, you know, certainly not something Steelers fans want to hear. But at the same time, you know, he's not going to be asked to be the starting quarterback, at least right away. Um, No, I don't think, I mean, unless you guys are, um, my my belief is that unless Wilson gets injured or you guys are floating at something like five and nine with three games to go, I don't think Fields is starting games. You think that's possible? I mean, if the... If the defense declines, yeah, that's possible. Sure. Let's talk about Patrick Queen a little bit. This offseason, they trade Deontay Johnson for uh, Dante Jackson. What are your thoughts on uh, you know a few of these moves that they made defensively? Uh, I'll start with the Deontay Johnson is an interesting guy. He does not generally do well in our metrics, but that's because our usual DVOA metrics include all targets. And he has had a habit the last couple of years of being the guy who gets the targets when he's covered that don't get completed. And so he looks worse than he is. Uh, We have a new stat we introduced this year called root DVOA that's based on roots rather than targets. So it partly takes uh, into consideration how often a receiver can get himself open for a target. And Johnson did better in that. And he does better in like the ESPN tracking metrics. So that is a loss. I mean, the the fact is, you look at their starting receivers, Van Jefferson is the very definition of just a guy. And it's either, and then it's either like, when is Calvin Austin going to finally make it happen? Or it's a third round rookie. Right. So, I mean, that's, that's worrisome. Um, That uh, Queen, uh, I, I'm probably more down on Queen than Steelers fans are. I worry about, given the kinds of criticisms that he had about like over pursuit and things like that before last year, I wonder what he'll be without Roquan Smith next to him to anchor everything. Um, you know, like having Roquan Smith there as the anchor allowed Queen to uh, to kind of do his own thing a little bit more. And I don't know what happens now that he's supposed to be the anchor. He's supposed to be the main middle line. You know, I mean, he he's the star now, not not a Landon mm-hmm. Roberts, right? So um, I'm not. I don't think it's high on the Queen signing. And also, the fact is, off ball linebackers don't move the needle as much as other positions on defense. They just they just don't, with very rare exceptions. Roquan Smith, you know, happens to be a rare exception. Fred Warner, uh, Matt Milano. Um, you know, that being said, so there's my negativity. 
the positivity is all the players that are still there. <laughs> TJ Watt, still there. Highsmith, still there. Joey Porter, a year more of experience. Mika Fitzpatrick, still there. So there's like lots of reasons to still be optimistic about the Steelers' defense, even if I'm, you know, Dante Jackson doesn't really stand out as either good or bad. And, and so, and I'm not as high on Queen as other people. So I'm not as high on the additions. I don't know. Great insight. So uh, obviously the Steelers addressed the offensive line in the draft. Just what did you like specifically that the Steelers did? Uh, talk a little bit, bit about maybe Zach Frazier filling that hole. Obviously, I don't know much. I, I'll tell you, I'm not much of a draft guy. What I'm about Roman Wilson? Of a, of a learning about, I don't remember. I honestly don't remember how Wilson did. We do do wide, sure. receiver, wide receiver projections mm -hmm. uh, with a system called Playmaker Score. And I honestly don't remember whether Roman Wilson was particularly – I mean, given that I don't remember, he's probably came out looking like a typical third round pick because I don't sure. remember yeah. him being particularly good and I don't remember him being particularly bad. And I, I'm not a scout, certainly, to have the kind of knowledge of the two offensive linemen um, that that would allow me to really talk about like what their mm -hmm. positives and, and negatives are. I think, um, you know, given your expectations for players based on their draft position, it's very likely that Frazier is better than Herbert. Yeah. Right. So that's very likely an upgrade. And Moore was not considered a great left tackle. Now the interesting thing was, is that I always thought the plan was Broderick Jones would eventually move to the left side. And now it looks like that's not the case. Broderick Jones will stay on the right side. They've certainly, you know, between the money that they gave Daniels and Sayomalo and the draft picks they've used on the other three guys, this is a team that has absolutely put capital into the offensive line. You can tell in part by the holes at wide receiver yeah. that the capital has gone into the offensive line. So, you know, it looks like it should be good. We hope. I don't after the seeing Mason Cole snap the ball last year, I, I love him to death, but it, it was just it was just well. My fear also would be the, rookie tackles have been all over the place the last couple of yeah. years. Like a guy like Evan Neal really had problems. Um, but then you have a guy like uh, Andrew Thomas who struggled a lot as a rookie and then really got his act together the second year and now is really good. Mm -hmm. So I don't know whether these guys how these guys are going to be as rookies. But do yeah. remember that there are a lot of offensive linemen who struggle as rookies and then get their act together after that. So don't don't judge based on just the rookie year alone. Fair enough. I have one more question. I'll throw it back to Mike. Talk a little bit about Arthur Smith. What do you think that this Steelers offense can look like? Obviously, you know, it's very early, but what do you think he brings to the table the most? Look, I, I know that the, he got a lot of criticism in Atlanta. OK, because he didn't play the players that fantasy football people wanted him to play. And it did feel like, gee, you guys have used your high draft picks on these guys. Why are you not playing them enough? But, yeah, you know, some of Drake London's numbers not being that high were the quarterback could get it to Drake London. It's not Arthur Smith's problem. You know, mm -hmm. he's not throwing the ball. So when, when you go back to Tennessee, I think he was a pretty good offensive coordinator. I mean, he made Tannehill look like a stud. OK, with the play action and the way that that offense worked. And, yeah, it's not Derrick Henry carrying the ball. But as I often say, here's the thing about play action. You don't need to establish the run with a great running back. The run was established in Pop Warner. OK, your whole life as a linebacker, you have learned to jump forward when you see that handoff. And it doesn't matter if it's Derrick Henry or it's Deuce Daly or it's Najee <laughs> Harris. It doesn't matter. You, you're going to jump forward. So play action works and play action works in his offense in particular. So I would be optimistic about Arthur Smith. I think some of the sort of feeling of mismanagement and, you know, that he was a little bit of a doofus as a head coach, it, you know, offensive coordinator is a very different job. And the things that a lot of the things that he was criticized for as a head coach, you have a head coach who's really good at. So no worries there. He only has to be an offensive coordinator. We're hanging out here with Aaron Schatz and the sick podcast Steelers. Crazy. We talked about the lack of depth at the receiver room. Um, but a, a name we didn't mention is George Pickens. 
from a fantasy perspective, from a analytics perspective, is this guy ready to take the leap into the elite class? I mean, I think if I think if they I think the the efficiency is there if they target him like a number one receiver, and they should, given who their receivers are. I think that there's a good opportunity there. Listen, I, uh, FTN, we we just did a, a fantasy. We're in the middle of a dynasty draft, and I took Pickens. So I'm rooting for him big time. <laughs> Where'd you take him? What round? I'm a big oh, dynasty guy myself. Oh, I can't myself. remember. Uh, sixth. It may have been the mm -hmm. sixth round. I sixth, think yeah. I Jamar Chase was my first pick. McCaffrey was my second because I went with, the you know, you have to balance age with how good players are. And of course, yeah. It's, it's I'm the in first five year. of them. First year of five doing of them. It. This is my first time Holy doing a real God. dynasty league. So, yeah. Um, the, um, I mean, Pickens is a, a good guy. I, I know there's questions about him, you know, off field and does he try hard enough all the time, whatever. Again, um, Tomlin, you know, uh, we have things that we can pick apart as analytics people that coaches do. And then there's the things you can't measure with analytics, but that doesn't mean those things don't exist. And Tomlin is great with all the things that analytics can't measure. And the biggest part of that is player management and motivation. Again, you've probably heard people say this, but it is true. This is a man who kept the lid on Antonio Brown for a long freaking time. Lifetime okay. Achievement Award there. That is some management. That's a Hall of Fame management, like player management. Right? So if Pickens is a little bit of a jerk, like if Pickens is a little bit of a jerk, I do kind of trust Tomlin to, to kick him in the butt and, and get him out there and get him uh, motivated. And the, and the talent is there. Go ahead, Jordan. Yeah, so before we get you out of here, all good stuff. Uh, just great letting you talk and break it down. I know our viewers will really appreciate it. The way too early Steelers prediction. You don't have to give me a final record, but where could you see them falling? Is you know, Are they finally going to get the playoffs? Uh, I feel like they're very average. Game? I feel like they're very average. It's likely that they're going to be around 10th or 11th on defense, around 20th on offense. Um, they're just going to be very average and maybe Tomlin kicks it up a little bit. And so they go nine and eight again. Like I, I just, this team does not feel like a Super Bowl contender by any means. And it absolutely does not feel like a team that's going to bottom out. It yeah. feels like they feel very middle of the road. Um, I was talking on a different podcast a little bit ago today uh, about the New Orleans Saints being a very mediocre team that people think is bad. I think the, the Steelers are kind of a mediocre team that people know is average. Like people know this team is not bad. <laughs> yeah. Like they know, like the, there's, there's too many stars in certain places like Watt uh, and Hayward uh, and Minka for this team to be bad. And Tom as the coach, they're not going to be bad. They just, unless Russell finds the fountain of youth, they're not going to be a top 10 offense. And you need a top 10 offense to make it to the playoffs unless you're sneaking in with the seventh seed. There you have it. Well, or, or unless you have a top we 10. Want, defense, we so want the truth. A top 10 defense. I think they're going to be like a 10. A okay. 10. Fair enough. Well, it was great everything uh really appreciate you coming on the podcast just tell everyone what you got coming up i know you talked about it earlier and and where they can find your work at yeah so first of all i'm on all your social media a shots nfl a s c h a t z nfl uh we're running uh off season stuff lots of uh ftn fantasy has lots of preseason projections uh, best ball rankings, dynasty rankings, but at the DVOA page, we're running a like series of stats about like how defenses did with pressure and how quarterbacks did under pressure and a lot of the stuff that goes into the writing of the book. But the big mm -hmm. thing is going to be the book. Uh, and I hope you'll tell your readers about it when it comes out. It should be out around mid July FTN football almanac 2024. Uh, we need to design the cover here. So I do not. Mike already put in his pre-order. Cover He's to see cover. Cover. He's Probably Travis Kelsey on the cover, I'm guessing, since we okay. usually do the defending Super Bowl champion. And we already used Mahomes on last year's book. One reason I would like the Chiefs to stop winning the title 
is because I'm going to run out of Chiefs <laughs> players to put on the cover of the book. Hey, that makes sense. I don't want to get to the point where I'm putting like Shamari Connor on the cover of the book. <laughs> that makes three hey, of us, right? Yeah. Well, we hope maybe George Pickens can and can get up there if, if Tomlin can uh, keep him on the rack because we know the talent's there. But, hey, it was great having you on the show. I know our viewers are really going to appreciate everything that you just gave us. So Yeah, uh, I mean, I may, not be, I may not be as high on the Steelers as you would like me to be. But no, there that's, is, there is we're unbiased here. I will say there is something prideful about being part of the best division in the NFL. Yeah. yeah. There you have right? it. It's the best division in the NFL. Totally. It's very like I may not think the Steelers are going to be that much above average, but it's very likely all four teams are above average. So it's that's pretty hard competition. <laughs> say I'll say so. to say the least. Yeah, absolutely. And they made the playoffs last year with Mason Rudolph in that division. But they made but the obviously, playoffs obviously. So that's nice. Joe Burrow injury factors in and you know the Browning was, struggles. Here's the thing about the Bengals, though. Uh you can't project the Bengals to be that much better than they were last year because yeah. Browning was shockingly good. Mm. Like yeah. the, you, you can't like Burrow. The what you think the difference between Burrow and Browning is, and so you're like taking last year's Bengals at nine and eight, and you're adding Burrow, and then you're thinking they're the best team in the conference, right? No, the difference between Browning and Burrow was not as big as that, and so bringing Burrow back, I mean, is better because. Bring Burrow back is better because in the long term, it's much more likely that Burrow will keep up that level of play mm -hmm. than that Browning will. But Browning played pretty well last year. So it's not like the Bengals have as much to add on to as you think they do. Is Deshaun Watson cooked? I think so. I think ever. I think That'll help. Is... That'll help the Steelers. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, cool. the thing is, Miles Garrett and Jim Schwartz are not cooked. Yeah. But I think Deshaun Watson, it, it would be pretty uh, unlikely for him to come back from the quality that we've seen from him for the last year and a half. It was one thing when it was six games, but now that it's a, a, a whole year and then six games, like now it's like a whole, we have a real sample size of him being, sure. of him being bad. Yeah. It's a good note to end it on for Steelers Nation out there. Who, yeah, uh, <laughs> I like that. Yeah, we'll we'll take we'll take that for sure. Thanks again. Hey, we we love, really appreciate love to have your you back time. at some point. All right. Keep up the good work. Sure. We'll talk to you soon. Yeah, man, that was a, that was a good note to end on. I I completely agree. I think that the AFC North's one of the toughest division, if not the toughest division in all of the Absolutely. NFL. Um, even on team like what we had, you know, players, current players, former players, on here, and they all say it doesn't matter. You throw the record out of the window and uh you know they're just playing to win um it's yeah, the it's toughest division in football and the steelers have to play every division game from week 11 on yeah, so that magnifies it i think as well um and thanks nfl listen, he, God. he's right in terms of the uh the schedule obviously a big time variable are always injuries i i probably found what he said about Justin Fields to be the most interesting. I think all of us right now can agree that Russell Wilson average is okay. Average means the 15th best quarterback in the NFL the Steelers last year probably had the 29th or 30th best quarterback. 34th. In the NFL. I think that yeah. there was people better that so, you, whatever the games had to qualify for to get them into that stat. So if they improved the quarterback and they were a playoff team last year, obviously the big factors I think are, uh, Aaron Rodgers returning, Joe Burrow returning, and you know the AFC just still remaining really strong. Baltimore, Kansas City. We'll see what happens with the the Chargers, but um, I think at the at the end of the day, it's going to come down to how well Russell Wilson can play. If you have to get to Justin Fields via poor play by Russell Wilson, you're probably in a lot of trouble anyway, considering how easy the schedule is in the first handful of games. I agree. Well, hey, it's been another great episode of the Sick Podcast, Steeler Crazy. We're going to be rocking and rolling here bringing you guests, breaking down film, maybe even some giveaways in the near future. You never know. So make sure you subscribe. We're not just on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts on all major streaming platforms. We appreciate you. We love you. Tell your friend and uncle the sick podcast, Steeler Crazy, all year long. I'm Jay York Football. Next to me is Mike Up Sports One from Sunny. I almost said Southern California. It just sunny in Pittsburgh. Sunny, sunny, it is sunny, sunny in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh right now, but it's always sunny in South Florida. So rub it in. Go ahead.
No, 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 no. It's hot right now. It's about 100 degrees. It's sunny in Pittsburgh, but the Pirates can't get a win. So, um, you know, sorry, who, Paul. Who, uh, sorry, sorry, Paul. It just happened to Paul and Jared, you know, back to back games. I'm sure, be watching this tomorrow. So. Um, it's, it's nice to talk Steelers whenever, uh, you know, to help get our Thanks. mind off of that a little bit. So let's still go, Bucks. Love you. Beat them, Bucks. Go, Steelers. They won't. <laughs> Till next time, thank you guys, as always. Love yous. And we just wanted to tell all of you out there that this episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. It can be easy to ignore our social battery and spread ourselves thin, especially with social gatherings picking up after the winter. Therapy can give you the self-awareness to build a social life that doesn't drain your battery. Find your social sweet spot with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash P-I-T-T to get your 10% off for your first month. Betterhelp.com. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the sick podcast Steelers Crazy on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts.